Okay, gonna try some more three minute because I'd like to uh, get over 2400 again. Um, got above, but then immediately fell below. I'm gonna start with E4. I've been really liking the advanced French. Um, I normally play the Tarash in tournaments, but I think I've been getting really nice positions out of this because no one takes on D4 as early as they should until now. Uh, okay, we're gonna go into a Knight D2 Milner Berry. And I have two ideas. One is queenside expansion, maybe bishop b3 and b4 type moves. And the other is to pester with knight g5, hit h7, maybe come with queen h5. Now, which looks better against knight e7? Well, knight g5 is probably not so threatening. I don't really have knight f7s when they have extra defense of g6. So maybe I should look queenside, especially because I don't really know where their queen goes here. Okay. Rook c1 is often a useful inclusion. I could also play knight g5 with the point that now I have time for f4, but maybe they just have h6. I could play queen h5, g6, queen h3, bishop g7, they hit the pawn, and my knights then hit. Okay, let's play it a little more queen side. See where they go. There's sometimes some bishop c5 ideas, but I don't know why they'd exist here. I'm just not familiar enough with the, um, the standard plans. Um, I want to play b4, but I don't think I can justify it. I want to play knight g5, but e5 hangs. Therefore, I don't know, maybe a3. I to play b4. Gain a little space. Queen e2, get my queen aligned with the pawn. Three rook e1. Maybe d1 was better. Dream of uh, coming here and hitting on the diagonal. I don't have adequate compensation for the pawn, and I'm behind on the clock. Maybe I should try h4 ideas. Um, just looking to support g5. I, they can probably just take it, so maybe I should play g3. Sometimes they can't, though. Oh, they're opening lines for me. Alright, well, I certainly want to open lines. Let's get the rook. Maybe queen d3, just keeping an eye on d5. But how to make progress. Think about b5. Probably doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, this was a nice idea if there's come to f5. Hmm. Can't really save that, and gotta go quick. I'll take an e7. Um, think about taking on c8 to deflect their bishop from attacking my pawn. I uh, can't move the knight because the rook's hit. We can see two. Hit the bishop. Does it do me any good? No. Alright, can I have the pawn? Play h4, think about knight g5. The queen's not on my rook anymore, so my knight's free to move. But right now I'm just trying to play quick and hoping magic happens. Seems pretty unlikely here. I think they handled my opening quite well, and I did not have any particularly good ideas. I should have played at bishop a2. Okay. I can take here. Uh, okay. Play bishop a2. If they play queen e4, I win a queen. I can dream, but most likely they're going to move somewhere where I play bishop d5, and then there's 
Yeah, bad position. Oh, can't come there. Alright, I'll pre move her to d8. If it's not good, then, well, I was in trouble anyway. They should probably play e4. I don't, my knight has no good squares. Uh, okay. Try to sneak in behind. Can't. I have one threat. They're probably going to check on d1, and I won't be able to move my king fast enough, but... Yeah. Okay. Uh, 0 for 1. Should have checked the opening there. Uh, I'll go back after, because I should know what I'm doing in the, uh, the Milner Berry. Just trying to regain on c5. I'll look to play d5 someday. Maybe get my bishop out first. I guess take on c4, because their bishop has lost a tempo. I don't know what's the more active square. I guess here. I don't mind them taking... Oops. Oops. Uh, them taking and then doubling my pawns on f6 at all. e6, maybe? Expand a little? Not sure. I'm not sure where to put my queen, either. Maybe e7. I think some times about bishop a3. So I think the long diagonal bishops are the better ones in these, these positions. Yeah, centralize the rooks and then figure out a plan. I think I do want to trade these bishops. Okay. Maybe come to d5. Try to say this is a good outpost, but I did give up e5, so... Eh, might not do anything. I can probably think about taking on f3 sometimes, too, actually. Okay. Probably retake knight. I don't know. These positions are always kind of neutral, and often whoever tries to do something gets themselves in trouble. And I have a bad habit of trying to do something. Despite my normal preference for doing nothing, so I don't know why I handle these positions so poorly. Isn't knight c3 pretty good for me? I mean, not like, anything special, but... Hmm. Didn't see this. I hit the knight. I have some ideas. This might not have been the right square, but they're sort of like... moves in the air. It's possible none of them work. I can play like knight e2, queen c1 check, but does it do anything? No, I can play queen c1 check first and then knight e2 and feel all cool that I got a fork. Does it do anything? No. I can play like queen f4, they take on b7, I take on b1, they can't take back due to rook c1. Hmm. I feel like I should have something fancy here. Like, queen f6, they take the bishop, and I have a discovery on their queen. The problem is they can just take it. Um. Oh, maybe queen f4 with the idea of rook b7, uh, knight e2, and then rook c1. Yeah, because the king has no escape square. So I have a threat here. Yeah. Hey, we found something. Tactics. I can pre-move rook c1, I think. Nope. Oh. Alright, so I have knight g3... Let's go there. If king g1, then rook c1 is crushing. So they have to go to e1. And then rook c1, they have to give the queen there too. And that's actually mate. Ooh. We got there. Nice. Yeah, so probably best king g1. 
Rook c1, queen takes rook, queen takes king h2, knight f1 check, and then I pick up b1, and I'm up a queen for a rook. I also have discoveries with the knight, but I think I'll just take on b1. Now my main worry, they should go knight g5 or knight e5, threatening mate. And then I should probably play g6, give my king a square, maybe king f8. Can I do anything fancy with my knight first? No, I don't think so. g6 or king f8. I'm going to go g6. Give them fewer checks. Maybe play queen e1 with the idea of knight e3 followed by queen f2, and I'm on g2. Did I walk into something? I go this way. If a knight takes e6, king e6, knight g7, king d8, I run towards the rook. And I should be able to get out of checks. Lucky my queen's not here. Uh, no, I mean, I just trade for it, so not a big problem. Alright. Uh, check. Check. Maybe g4 did not help them. Alright. Interesting game. Glad I found uh, a nice tactic after... Uh, in this position, I found queen f4. And it loses to knight d8. Okay, so I guess I found the tactic here. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to go check out the prior game, because I'm curious what I should have done here. This one, we just got a kind of neutral, equal position out of the opening. Um, well, the last one, I got a busted position out of the opening, and should uh, learn what to do better. So, in the Milner Berry with knight d2, knight e7. Alright, bishop e3, queen d8, and now which side of the board to play on? So people have played queen b3, rook c1, and b4. Let's see who's played it, because that can often be helpful. Because you can look for someone you know has kind of nice preparation. Um, I don't know who Matthew Cornet is, but it's a 2500, it's the strongest player in the position. They went for knight g5. Interesting. And black has to play knight c6 to... Okay, h6. h6. Knight h7. Curious. And they just gave up the exchange. But I guess knight f8 is going to be kind of annoying for black, because if they take king, their rook's stuck in the corner. They don't have a good way to unravel. If they take rook, maybe I start targeting this pawn. Interesting. I thought with a knight e7 play, they'd have their king side well defended, and knight g5 would be less tempting. So queen b3's also been played. Knight c6 looks reasonable. I don't think I want to take. If I don't want to take, I don't love queen b3. What about rook c1? Knight c6. a3. Should be 7. b4. a6. This looks pretty similar to my game. For e1, say. I mean, how did my game go? <laughs> Let's go back to my game. Uh, queen d8, rook c1, knight c6, a3, bishop b7, b4, a6. Yep, same position. I played queen e2, which no one's played here. Um, computer still thinks white is pleasant. So I guess they did a much better job of handling the kind of French-type position than I did. So queen d3, g6, bishop h6. Okay, I can play a little more forcefully than I did. Let's say rook e8. Looks normal. Okay, I'm a little worse. Um, and it's a little hard to find a plan. Black is the center they're going to try to get rolling, and I don't really see what targets to aim for. But the computer does say I'm fine. That's interesting. Okay. 1, 4, 2. Okay. 
got a good opponent. Oh, I didn't mean to play bullet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, let's play go for a pet draw. Solid, as Ben Feingold would say. So he'd say it. Solid. I can't do his voice at all. I can't do any voice at all. Uh, anyway. So it's the knight c3 variation. There's this kind of standard development with bishop e7, knight c6, bishop e6, queen d7. If I'm worried about knight g5 and want to keep f7 kind of defended, then I play bishop f6 before castling, just so my queen controls that square. Now I'm going to castle, and then I have to figure out what to do, which is always the hard part. Maybe knight e5. Uh, maybe king b8 is just useful. Maybe rook to the center. Maybe h6, think to expand someday. Bishop g4 is also possible. So many moves. I'm going to start with h6, get the pawn off, think about g5, f5 type pushes someday, and prepare rook e8. Alright, chase the bishop. Now, the only way they can add pressure to the pin is knight d4, and I will swap there if so. So I think I can keep developing. Bishop g4 also looks possible, but I'm going to keep developing first. Okay, I'm going to swap. And now... We have to play d5. I'd like to do something with my bishop. Maybe g5 and f5 coming, actually. I can start expanding. I'm not too worried about this pin. Like, if they decide to add pressure to it, I'll just play over here. Ooh! That's creative. If I go g5 and f5, though, maybe I can insert bishop g4 too. Play f5. I think they should play f4. And then my bishop doesn't have a natural way to uh, move to contest this rook. Okay. Missed that. That seems like a pretty good move. Alright, I think I am annoyed by this pen. Let's get rid of it. Let's hit the rook away from supporting this bishop. So I want to take, I think bishop g4 slightly weakens their pawns. Now I guess bishop f5. Their bishop doesn't, ooh, their bishop does have a square. Alright, so I should probably try to swap it off quickly. Um, or rook e6. Yeah, let's contest the file this way. Now their bishop doesn't have squares. Maybe they should think about a4. Probably play king b7, just ready to take back. I should look to play king b7 at some point anyway to uh, have the king as a potential defender over here. Now it should be noted their bishop doesn't really have a defender because the pawn's pinned. Not that my knight can ever come attack it, but it's worth, worth spotting. They sidestep that. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to double against the bishop. Ooh, maybe now knight a5. Gives me time for c6. Try to lock down some queenside squares. If bishop c2, I could just play c6, because if they take, they allow knight b3, which is just kind of cute. Might even still be fine for them, but... Because they just get so much power on the e-file. But I'm also coming into c4 if I want it. Um, their queen only has d1, and then knight e3 will win an exchange. But their bishops on e5 is very good. I'm tempted to just sit on this, to just say, make a move. Yeah. If bishop f5, knight b3. If b4, I think I play bishop c2. Okay. They went for it. And they might have had good reason to. I guess I want to get out of the pen while keeping e6 well defended. 
So you have a bishop and rook for the queen. I should probably look to play queen f5, start thinking about kind of potential infiltration squares if they don't keep everything defended. If you take on a4 someday or play a5, b4, because I will need to open lines or my queen won't have things to do. I'll play queen d3. Yeah, if they're going to give me any entry, I think I should try to take it immediately. Looking at b4, uh, let's have the potential to make a fast a-pawn. Think about queen b3, also b4, let's go b4. They can't take, starting to threaten queen b3, followed by bc3. Yeah. Be rook c6, just piling up on the weak pawn. They have the potential to get their rook active now, but... Alright, gotta make sure I don't blunder anything. Check. Don't know where to go. Check. Avoid rook b2. Check. b3. Queen b3. I could have taken the rook. That would have been a good move. Uh, check. And we got there. Alright. Interesting game. So we got this normal knight takes e3 Petrov. Usually white's bishop goes to e3. I don't really know the differences. Um, and then here I had to find kind of a plan. Or something to do. And I started with h6, which is correct. Nice. h6, bishop b5. And this is often really annoying when you've castled. But, like, it's not as scary as it looks. So I throw an a6, but I don't need to make the weakness of b5. I can just develop. Good. Knight d4. Now, I can't really allow this. Sometimes, sometimes there's stuff you can't allow. For instance, if, like, bishop d4, queen d4, um, b5's just went, oh, right, because the knight's on the queen. Yeah. Um, but, like, if, uh, I don't know how to get to the position from here, but, like, I don't know, if somehow this bishop and the knight were traded off, you often have just like the queen moving out of the way, white takes on c6, black takes black back, black puts the king here, plays c5, and it's sort of like the uh, Rubenstein French videos I've done where this structure is actually surprisingly stable for black. So I have to take. I considered bishop d5, but I, it just felt so pushable away. Um, I played d5, and bishop c6 is really good. So they found a nice idea with rook e3, but actually inserting this first, and then swinging around, and it's really hard for me to defend uh, this square with the bishop so strong too, because I can't defend on the complex they can attack. Uh, yeah, so f5 was a mistake. They have this bishop c6, rook c3, just winning, yep. And now I felt I had to break the pin, then I thought f4 was useful, and we got this position. Ah, they should look to undermine with g3. Yeah, I can't really keep my pawns together. And somewhere around here, c3, and I started feeling, yeah, pretty good about this position. And I went for c6, just saying you can't do anything. The computer says, nope, you should go for knight c4, queen d1, bishop c2, queen c2. Then not knight e3, just take on a4. Yeah, it's defended, the queen comes to b5, this knight's incontestable. Yeah, that's very strong. I didn't see that possibility. Okay, uh, I don't know what I'm at. Am I at one for two? No. Uh, what am I at? <laughs> Sorry, keep losing track. Just trying to play five games in a set. Alright, we won this, won this, lost that. One for three. Okay, two more. Or two for three. Nope, not one minute, three minutes. Sorry, I'm, uh, kind of scattered today. go d4. None of these uh, QG, uh, queen's pawn specials, you know. I play it weirdly, but I'm going to play a queen's gambit. I do not like to see d5 here, I like to see d6. My idea is just not to give the king's indian the normal targets and to really control this e5 square. I can't draw arrows. Uh, here, I want to put my bishop on g5. If they chase, 
I can run away, and when they play g5, I have knight d2 with a discovery on their knight. If their knight then retreats, my bishop can come here, and I keep the two bishops. So black does not have a way to grab the two bishops there. The, here, the g5 might look like it. Or not in a good way, because their pawns will be broken up to do so. So they should play knight f6. I will play bishop g3. And we will have a normal position, but I have this undermining h4 idea. I think black has gone kind of a little astray. Um, reasonable idea to chase the bishop, but I think white should be better now. I like this move. I'm going to take. Not have to deal with uh, keeping my center together, not give a target. Play h4. If they play g4, I'll play h5 so that their pawn can't support. Okay. Now, do I want bishop e2 or queen c2? I think if I don't play queen c2 now, they might have bishop f5 at an annoying moment, but if I do, they'll get knight b4 with tempo. Alright, so bishop f5 and knight b4 I have identified as my problem here. Therefore, maybe just insert a3. Prepare queen c2. I think they should play bishop f5. I was thinking maybe I have e4, but anytime I play e4, they get this d4 square forever. So I think they should definitely go bishop f5, and maybe I'll reply with knight f3. Offer a queen trade, hit the g5 pawn. They can play queen b6, and then actually a3 hinders me from a kind of natural way to defend it. Um, okay. So their point is they're going to get b2. I'm going to get g5. I don't know. Complicated. I don't want to get my rook trapped. I do want to trade queens, but not on their terms. Huh. I think I'll take on g5. If queen a5, I have queen d2. If bishop b2, I'll take on d8 and then play rook d1. After an opening I felt went really nicely for me, this is obviously uh, the early middle game has not been a good phase. Okay, what to do about this pawn? Nothing? I don't know. Could play queen e2, but they probably just go like queen b6, and what am I doing? All right, let's forget about the queen side. Try to just trade something off. But they're going to win everything over here. This is uh, this is real bad. Yeah, they're just a bad position. I'm just going to try to get my bishop to an active square. Uh, but they can check my king in quite unpleasant ways. Probably have to move my f-pawn at some point so that the king can uh, hide over there. I wanted to play bishop f3, rook d8, king d8. How do we not just lose? Don't know. I'm going to try to trade something, and this way my king has an escape on uh, f3 if needed. Okay. Now, if they go bishop d3, take c4, they do defend f7. <laughs> Nothing works for me. Wow. There's, like, vaguely cute ideas of bishop takes c4, bishop takes f7, bishop takes f7, rook h8, king h8, knight f7, four king h8 and d8, but it's defended, so, you know. <laughs> Doesn't work. They're low on time. So we have exactly one reason to be optimistic. I guess this does give me the chance to get my rook in, but do I even want my rook in? I don't know. Okay, let's bring the knight in. Maybe think about rook h6 next, because it's a little hard for them to defend g6. I guess we're going to win this game on the clock, but I didn't deserve it.
Yeah, just they're slow. Not even getting anything here. Ah. Come back to H4. Okay, well, I did not deserve that one. I think they, uh, they handled it nicely. Um, three for four. So, at this opening point that the bishop, knight d2 saves my bishop. Then after bishop g3, have a nice position. They played c5, which was a nice immediate move. I thought that leaving the pawn could get this target on d4, so I decided to just get rid of it. But of course, d5. Didn't consider this at all. d5. And now if we do show threat, I should just continue developing. I should not rush to play h4. I should maybe think about taking over the center with e4. That makes sense. I can often play more centrally with e4, f4. I don't have to undermine with h4. And I can often kind of prepare e5. Because if everything blows open, these pawns are going to be kind of vulnerable. I don't have to immediately target them for them to be eventual weaknesses. So okay, d5, and white is a nice position. Uh, 3 for 4, did not deserve it at all. I run this ship. Okay. Uh, let's play knight c6 don't play this often. Ooh, I don't like e5 because I play knight f6 when I play e5 lines. So we're going to play e6 and d5 and end up in something like a Guimard French. They're going for a King's Indian attack. This is, uh, we're all playing weird things today. Okay, how can we keep it weird? Let's play f5. Just really turn this game into a strange one. D4 looks maximally peculiar, but don't believe in it. I can try G5. Does that hang everything? I don't think so. Let's play as psychopathically as possible. Just try to expand everywhere and then hope we don't create all the weaknesses. If their knight moves, of course, queen h5 is terrifying. Uh, it can be occasionally useful. My king can go to d7 instead of e7, so there's no, like, bishop g5. But obviously we're trying not to concede a deadly queen h5. If they play h3, I was thinking just h5. Um, can also play knight h6, because the knight can come back... Oops, wrong color. Because the knight can come back to f7. But I'm in an expanding. Hmm. Okay, we'll make one somewhat reasonable move. Thinking knight f7, bishop g7. Kind of focus fire the pawn down. So they just have d4. Doesn't really work. Is the insertion of a5, a4 good for me? No idea. Expand everywhere. We'll play very hackily this game. Probably rook g8 next. Just so I can play g4. Ah, interesting. Okay. I don't really think they get too much out of this outpost. I'm going to be able to contest it. Now, I am giving up my good bishop pretty easily here. But I think I can contest the squares well enough that I don't really mind my position. Okay. Do I want to play bishop e7 or takes? Depends on, do I mind my king coming to f7? I don't really. I'm going to play bishop e7. Right. How to create further play. You can develop for a turn. Maybe think about a3. Maybe knight a5. c4 can be nice if they come to knight d3. And also look to play c5 and b5 because our one goal this game is to expand everywhere possible. 
My E6 pawn is sadly still on my third rank, but I can push everything else. I also have a bishop takes h4 ideas sometimes. Ooh, it's kind of tempting. It's a shame I have no other attacking pieces, but if they take, I take, if they take, their ideas probably, they're going to have ideas I'm taking on g4 due to the pin. Man. Want to take. Let's take here first, so there's no c pawn hanging. Maybe throw in knight c4. Hit b2, and if they give up their bishop, then they don't have quite the threats. Okay. Can we go for it? Do we have the courage? Yes. Look to play rook ag8. Queen h2, I'm just going to retreat the queen and say my pawns are really good. Be good if I could get my bishop somehow involved. And I don't see a way. Uh, did I have g3 last turn? I had g3 last turn. I should have fought. <laughs> Gotta use the brain. Um, I really blew it. Okay, we gotta make a move quick. Uh, that gives him AB3, and now my knight doesn't have retreats. Maybe queen b4 next, threaten d4. Try to come in on both sides. No, nope. uh, I don't see anything. My pieces have no squares. I'm going to get my king mated now. Uh, let's take something. It's d3, but too weak, too slow. No. Yeah. Alright. Uh, don't even remember whether that was the fourth or fifth game. Let's stop there. I think that was uh, the fourth, but I think this has been pretty suspicious. Um, but I did, at some point, have... I just played automatically. I just have g3 here. And I hit the rook, and yeah. And the bishop. That was just a win. And instead, it all went downhill. Queen e7. I just wasn't finding a breaker. I, I didn't see this working. I do I have queen e1? Yeah, I have queen e1 at some critical moment. Maybe not immediately, but maybe. Alright. I tried. <laughs> I don't know. How bad does the computer think this opening is? e5 makes a lot of sense. g5! Hallelujah. Alright, I'm a genius.